Welcome to Sparks 1524. I'm Nathaniel Miller. This is the video version of my blog, sparks1524.com. I'll use this channel to discuss everything from mental health issues to travel and adventure to the writer's craft. I'll use it to put up notices about projects I'm currently working on, such as editing The Norfolk Murders. This is book number two of my Accidental Detective Murder Mystery series, and it will be released on Amazon this April 20th. I apologize for the construction noise you don't hear behind me. I will shortly be packing all of this up and moving from Washington State to Middle Tennessee this May. I look forward to taking you on that journey. Thank you for your kind support. I do ask you to subscribe, and I promise more content is coming. I hope you all have a great day. Go and do great things. Hello, welcome to the 100th episode of programming here on Sparks 1524. I'm Nathaniel Miller. That's right, this whole adventure started 100 episodes ago. Of course, my written blog has been going a long time before that, and this technically is an extension of the written blog. But 100 episodes is a good little bit of work, especially considering I started this as I was getting ready to move out of Washington State to come home to Florida for a few years. Now, in the old TV industry, 100 episodes is a magic number. Because when you hit 100 episodes of a TV show, you are guaranteed pretty much it going into syndication. Now, it could get syndicated with fewer episodes. The original Star Trek series did it with 79. But if you hit 100 episodes, that was a huge milestone. You did a lot of years of work. You're pretty much guaranteed syndication and almost permanent residuals. If you're not familiar with the term, residuals in the TV and movie industry are analogous to the royalties I get as a writer when uh, my books are sold. So I thought this would be a good episode to take a minute, look at some of the metrics and see where we are and where I should probably focus my future programming. This is important since I have a whopping 44 subscribers. That's 44 subscribers in about two years, but I purposely don't delve into politics and social controversies very often. When, and, those th and those things are extremely popular and people whoof, clickbait those real fast. But to quote the great Charles Schultz, who was once asked why he didn't do political commentary with the old Peanuts comic strip, he said, why do I want to alienate half my audience right off? So, let's do a little metrics, though. Because, as it turns out, the numbers are showing that despite having only 44 subscribers, I'm actually doing pretty decent. Just analyzing a period from October 28th to November 14th, very short period, I had 133 views. That means 133 people in that short period watched one of my videos. I have 44 subscribers, which means right now I have twice as many people dipping in and out as I do people who are dedicated to the channel. Those people dipping in and out might very well be watching every episode. They just never hit the subscribe button. That's kind of data I don't know because that YouTube's not going to give me the data on exactly who is coming to my videos. And I respect that. But it does mean I'm getting twice as many views as subscribers. So for me, that means I need to do, among other things, I do need to push requests for subscribing a little more because, let's be honest, the number of subscribers you have influences the YouTube algorithm about where your content and your programming, which is a term I prefer, fall in people's uh, feed when they pull up YouTube. But I have twice as many people watching as subscribed, so that, that's a good start. In that same time period, I had 4.6 thousand impressions, meaning... 4.6 thousand times my thumbnails advertising my videos were shown to somebody on YouTube. 4.6 thousand people saw one of my thumbnails. Now, out of that 4.6 thousand, 133 watched. So clearly I have work to do to keep building this channel, but that 4.6 thousand impressions is only from YouTube. It doesn't tell me how many people on Facebook saw my posts or on LinkedIn or on my written blog, sparks1524.com. So, once again, for a channel whose programming specifically eschews most of the time dealing with politics and social controversies, I don't think I'm doing too terribly bad. And by the way, just for the record, a lot of media commentary, uh, like uh, some of the great YouTubers like Nerdrotic and uh, Doomcock, uh, Overlord DVD, Lord Dictor Van Doomcock, the future ruler of Earth. I love his stuff. Great presenter, excellent host, outstanding information. 
I recommend you check out both Nerdrotic. Uh, actually, I'll recommend you check out Nerdrotic, Overlord DVD, and The Critical Drinker. He's in Scotland, another great media commentator on pop culture. But again, they deal with stuff that is inherently extremely popular. And I'm trying to build, let's be honest, probably a little more niche here since I do a lot of writing. So I decided to see which of my episodes, which of my series actually gets the best response. Three factors are not focused here. One, travelogue. Those overall are my most popular videos whenever I do them. But they can only do them when I travel. So I'm not considering those here. I am not considering the short take series. That's the popcorn of programming. Just those little two minute ones. It's like the ghost stories I did here in Pensacola over Halloween. Great story. A lot of local history, but not enough material to cover a whole video. So you get the short takes. So I'm not considering those. And the Just My Thoughts episodes, that series, which is where I do delve into social, political, and even uh, pop culture commentary, where I let you have my opinion. I keep those rare because, again, I'm not trying to honk people off. I want people to have this place to come and find fun stuff because we all need fun stuff. We really do. But once in a while, something comes up I have to speak out on. Those three I've taken out of the mix. The big winners in order of regular programming were first off Writer's Craft, so I'm going to definitely continue those. Uh, Mental Health, definitely another one I will continue. Veterans Talk and On the Waterfront were both tied. Now, Veterans Talk specifically deals with veterans' issues here in the, in the present day. On the Waterfront is me telling sea stories. Those were tied, so I will definitely be doing more of those, especially the On the Waterfront. And the last one was Past Explorations. The few times I do something that's very specifically historic, I get a great response. So I'm definitely going to be focusing on those. Uh, some others that I've done in the past, such as Blogger's Notebook, at the moment, I'm going to kind of fold it more into the writer's craft. Even doing a video like this involves a certain amount of writing. Now, obviously, I speak extemporaneously. I don't have a script. I, I stopped using a teleprompter two years ago. I started out writing a whole script for everything. It just didn't work. Sometimes I still use a script. Uh, I always write a script for the short takes. And if there's a, generally if there's a voiceover long term, like say some of my past explorations or when we went to Gettysburg for the 158th the, uh, last year, some of that will be scripted because I got a lot of information to give. But most of the time it's extemporaneous. So the blogger's notebook was one of the ones that got really low views. So it's clearly something my audience is not terribly interested in, and that's fine. Most of what I talked about there I can fold into the writer's craft, and I'll do that. But 100 episodes, considering I have uh, moved from moved across country, from coast to coast, uh, Pacific Coast to Gulf Coast, I went from having a house with absolutely no studio to one in which I have slowly built up my studio here, as you can see, while keeping the programming going. That alone is something I'm proud of because I spent my career in media in the Navy for the most part. I know how difficult it is because I've done it. Now, the last time I was mobile doing media, I was on an aircraft carrier, so I had a whole media center, but that experience has given me a chance to build this and at least have fun. Yes, I want to get to a point where I can monetize it. I ain't going to lie. We all want to make more money. But if I don't get to that point, I just would still like to reach more people because that's more writers to talk to, more veterans to chit-chat with, more people who might get an idea for me they never had and then comment back and give me an idea I never had. Either way, though, thank you for your time. Experience wonder. Think independently. And until we meet here again on the next episode of Sparks 1524, go and do some great things.